Last year, my Defender hit the 300,000 kilometer mark in its lifetime. And that's got me thinking, is it time to move on? guys and welcome back to TSBEC TV. I want to kick this video off by saying a huge thanks for helping us reach 15,000 subscribers on YouTube. It blows our minds that we're still smashing these milestones but we literally couldn't have done it without all of you so a huge thanks for your continued support. Anyway in the intro I mentioned that my Defender recently reached 300,000 kilometers in total driving distance. So today I want to do a bit of a review of it and talk about a lot of ideas that I have flying around in my head about what could be next for it. So to give you an introduction for any of you not familiar, this is my 1999 Land Rover Defender 90 TD5 and it was first registered in September of 1999, making it one of the earliest Defenders to have the TD5 engine fitted and also means it has the earlier 10P, as it's known, variant of the TD5 engine. And yes, it has now done over 300,000 kilometers or 306,000 to be precise, which equates to to about 190,000 miles. And yes, that's a hell of a lot, but it's not actually all that unusual here in Denmark to have vehicles with such high mileage. And that's because of the cost of motoring here. Cars have very high taxes placed upon them, which I'll go into more detail later on in the video, but it means that people tend to keep cars for longer before swapping them out. And I think that effect is almost exaggerated with a Defender because it's not the kind of vehicle that you just drive for a couple of years and then replace with a newer model. It's something you would wanna keep running for a whole lifetime even and just keep swapping out parts and keep it going. Hence why I've ended up with a Defender with such high mileage. And some of you may be wondering, why don't I just go out and buy um, one with lower mileage and better condition, a newer one, something like that. But they are so expensive here that it would be two or three times the cost of what this one was to go and buy one in newer condition or with quarter or half of the mileage or something like that. So it's just not worth it. Anyway, I think it's about time we jump in and talk about how all of this plays into the future of my Defender. So it's probably about time we talked about the kind of life this Defender has had over these 300,000 kilometers. And just a disclaimer, I have not owned it for the entire 300,000 kilometers. That would be quite ridiculous. It's been in my possession for the last five or six years, and in that time I've probably done about 70 or 80,000 kilometers. The previous owner, he owned a golf course and was just using it as to kind of throw things back and move around, I think, as a sort of utility vehicle. So I think it had quite an easy life then. I don't know what happened before that. Um, and you know sort of how it's been treated with me. We've had stuff like Earth Day, that's kind of the extremes, but it's been used as a bit of a, kind of as a Defender should, a farm vehicle, it's had stuff thrown in the back, it's pulled stuff, it's been off-road, um, and the majority of the thousands of kilometers that it's done have been uh, motorway commutes, basically, because I was commuting with this uh, Defender at one point. So that's where the many miles have come from. But, it has been looked after. It's been serviced when it should be serviced. When things break, they get fixed. And overall, for a vehicle that's done such high mileage, it drives very, very well. The steering wobble is kind of the asterisk on that sentence, because I honestly don't know whether it's been fixed yet, because I haven't actually taken it on the motorway in a long time. I haven't taken it up to those speeds. But for everything I do, which to be honest is just like local, I don't go on motorways or anything with it anymore. Uh, it's absolutely fine, drives really well, engine is really smooth. It's very, very nice. It needs a few bits here and there. The cosmetic bit is probably the bit that worries me a bit more now. The doors could do with the replacing. I would love to give it a respray, not that that's like 100% necessary uh, for the structural integrity or anything, but I would love to give it a respray. It needs new doors. Chassis is pretty solid, had a new cross member as well, but the chassis and cross member need treatment, I would say, um, because otherwise they won't last long enough. 
So that's something to be aware of. But overall reliability has been fairly good. Um, things have broken here and there. They've been fixed, like I say. Big things have broken. But what I will say, and I'm quite proud of this, is that it has never left me stranded. Not once have I ever been stuck somewhere and had to get a tow truck home. It has always got me home. The closest I've ever come to that is when the starter motor broke. And that was in a supermarket car park, actually. Uh, and some bloke very kindly helped me push start uh, the vehicle and uh, it ended up, ended up getting me home, no problems. Um, then there's also the remap. Some of you have been asking about the remap and how that's been. A lot of you have also said that it's a ridiculous idea and that my Defender is going to blow up at any second because I have this remap. But the fact is, I've had the remap now for two years, I think. Yeah, it must be two years. No, more than that, three. Three years. Um, yeah, I had the remap for three years. And for those of you that you, for those of you that don't know, I have a storm tuning stage two remap, which takes the power up to about 180, 190 horsepower. <coughs> and I've not had a single problem in the last three years. Not had a single problem as a result of the remap whatsoever. Speaking of which. So what has actually gone wrong in my time with this Defender? Well, I couldn't remember everything off the top of my head, so I made a list, which probably says something about the number of things that have gone wrong. But anyway, here is a list of all the major parts that have been replaced over the last few years. The turbo, the steering box, cross member, the fuel tank guard, the starter motor, the clutch master cylinder, the clutch slave cylinder, the thermostat, the door hinges, the steering shaft, and the fuel pressure regulator. And that's not including all of the modifications that have been applied to this Defender as well, because they may have fixed things over time also. So for example, we recently replaced a lot of the suspension components to try and get rid of the steering wobble. And then there's servicing, which is standard on any vehicle, but a longer and even more expensive list on a Defender. But it's worth noting that we're very fortunate here. Because we live on a farm, we have our own workshop, we're full of tools and people around us that know how to use those tools. So I haven't had to endure a lot of the labor costs that most people would in running a Defender. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's been cheap. In fact, it's been quite the opposite, which is expensive. Defenders weren't meant to do this, but it's fun. <laughs> awesome. Anyway, so how much has it actually cost to run? I know that's something so many of you want to know the answer to and you'd love a detailed breakdown of costs and all of that. But I think so many of you are going to hate me for the answer that I'm actually going to give. Because I don't know how I can give you a sort of specific answer to that. Because for me, it's something that kind of varies from person to person. Insurance is dependent on the person, your age and all of that. And your country. Tax is dependent on your country. The repair cost is depending on how you use it, how much you use it, how nicely you treat it, how old it is, all that sort of thing. Um, and I could go down and give you a breakdown of kind of, you know, the cost of all the parts I've replaced and labor costs and all this, but, you know, sorry, it's distracting me. I'm in an unusual, unusual situation because we have our own workshop, so I haven't had to pay labor costs for the most part. Um, so, yeah, I don't really know how I can give an answer to that question. I'll tell you how much the tax is, because, like I said, taxes here are a lot. So the annual road tax for this Defender is about £1,400. And that's only just going to get worse as we go into the future. No, actually, not necessarily. I'll get into that later. Uh, but yeah, £1,400 is the annual road tax. Uh, and then there's other things to think about now as well, because they're introducing these sort of 
congestion charges and things like that into smaller cities here in Denmark. So that's something to think about. There's all these, yeah, you're kind of punished here for driving a car like this. It, Denmark is one of the worst countries to be a petrol head in. I love this country, but you don't really want to be a car lover here because you'll just get punished unless you like Teslas or something and then good for you. Um, but if you like dirty old diesel defenders like I do, then you're a bit screwed. The point I'm trying to make here is that it's getting more and more expensive to run this Defender, especially in this country. And then on top of that, because of its age and the fact that things like the steering wobble happen, which just go on and on, then I get kind of paranoid about taking it on long trips. Then I get kind of you know protective over uh, taking it off road and the like because I just fed up of breaking things. So you know what should I do? to continue having fun and to continue having something interesting for this channel. You know, aside from the fact that, you know, we've got other Land Rovers, of course, we've got the Creeper Project, but I want something fun to share with you and something I will enjoy and use. So what are the options? I could take this off the road, so it won't be on plates anymore, won't be able to take it on the road, and I won't be paying the ridiculous amounts of insurance and tax and all of that stuff. Again, we're, I'm in quite an unusual situation because I have a huge forest on my in my back garden almost, uh, basically, and and we have fields and things like that. So I could actually still use it if I took it off the road. I just wouldn't be able to do stuff like this now and kind of use it as a you know runabout or do kind of odd jobs with it and things like that, which would be a shame because it's fun to drive in the summer and, and go places in it. But then there could be a solution to that. Then what else is the options? Uh, take it off the road and kind of rebuild it, restore it like I've been wanting to, and use that year or two break of it not being on the road to really properly fix it instead of just throwing money at it constantly. And then the option which I'm quite keen on is to take it off the road and then instead buy a series Land Rover so that I still have a Land Rover utility vehicle because it's something I still kind of need in day-to-day -day life. I need something I can throw things in the back and, you know, just have like a dirty old farm vehicle. And you might think, well, a series is just going to be just as expensive. It's just an older Defender. But the thing is, here in Denmark, and, you know, I think that's the norm in, the norm in most countries, um, is that a series would be classified as a classic car because it would be over 30 years old, which means the tax is next to nothing. And the MOT, uh, the kind of, you know, inspection you have every few years in every country, um, is, is much further apart. It's five or ten years or something silly like that, um, which I've always found funny because it's like, ah, oh, hey, I have a unsafe, unreliable, uneconomical old car, and I don't need to pay much tax, and I don't need to have it inspected as often. I mean, I guess the idea, you know, if you really think about it, is the fact that... Sounds so good. Uh, is that people don't use classic cars every day? It's something you take out once a week on a Sunday in the summer. Um, but yeah, anyway, the point is having a series would actually be much cheaper. They're not that expensive to buy here because, I mean, there's not that much demand for series Land Rovers. It's quite a niche thing in a way. The tax would be very low and it would just be a fun summer thing to throw things in the back and drive around and I wouldn't care about it. You know, it's it's a series for me. Like, I think this I'm a bit more precious about. I've got my sawtooth alloys and I, all these fancy things and I get a bit touchy about it. With a series, it's just like, it's a proper old Land Rover. And that would be a really cool thing to have. So I could go buy a series and then maybe even in the meantime, also do the whole restoration thing on this and give this a bit of TLC and then have the series as the road vehicle for doing things in and also obviously featuring on the channel and doing stuff with and it would be something new as well uh, so I'm actually really keen on that idea maybe a, a little worryingly so because I was looking at them this morning <laughs> so that is I think the kind of most obvious option right now that I'm really considering because I feel like something has got to change with this Defender it needs some work um, in places stuck at this junction. Yeah, it, I think it needs more work, more money thrown at it. It needs, I can't just keep going on in the way I'm going, is what I'm saying. Either I'm going to have to throw even more money at it, and therefore just spend more money, or take it off the road, save some money from the running costs of it, like tax, and then put money into it in other ways. And I'm not sure what to do yet, but I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below. 
but would I ever sell it? And for the foreseeable future, I just can't see that happening. I don't have the heart to do that, to be honest. I have so many great memories built up with this Defender, particularly uh, relating to the channel. You know, TSPEC TV wouldn't be where it is now if I didn't have this Defender. This, along with Nissa's V890, are kind of the, the stars of TSPEC TV. They are recognizable now, boys, which is crazy to think about. But I couldn't just get rid of it. It would just kind of break my heart a bit. Um, and, and and that's why I think I would rather keep this and smarten it up than sell it and try and get something else to replace it. I'd rather keep it, smarten it up and get something else alongside it. So, is it time to move on? Yes, but not in the way that I might have suggested at the start. So the other day I posted on our social media channels that I would be making this video and I asked you guys what you would like to know in regards to my Defender hitting 300,000 kilometers. And originally, I kind of wanted to answer all of your questions within the dialogue of the video, which I did with some things, because they kind of fell into the natural flow of it. But some of the questions also uh, really intrigued me, so I wanted to answer them outright now um, as standalone questions. So, the first one. What is the one mod that I still really want? To be quite honest, I don't think there is one main big mod that I really want for this Defender. Um, I think that, well, I know that what I really want to do is just smarten it up basically. You know, the, the one big mod would be something like a respray or new doors or a galvanized chassis or whatever. But for me that kind of falls under a, a full rebuild. It's something I would just do um, as a full rebuild anyway, not on its own. Um, so I don't think there's one big thing. It's kind of where I want it to be. I just want it to be like this, but <laughs> to look cleaner and smarter and newer, um, basically. Next question, do I want to take this Defender down the route of more of a dedicated off-roader or keep it to the on-road style? I definitely want to keep it to the on-road style. I wouldn't have bought the Sawtooth alloys if that wasn't the case because alloy wheels are not the most off-road friendly option. Um, so, you know, I wouldn't go for a lift kit or bigger tires or you know, whatever else is kind of off-road related. I like it quite the way it is, more factory standard looking like a sort of old school Defender. Uh, and then lastly, what would I do differently if I could go back in time to when this Defender was stock and apply all the mods again, do all that stuff again, how would I make it different? I think the one thing that sticks out in my mind is the Mud Stuff Center console. I really regret fitting that. It was one of the first things that we did, but I really regret doing it because we had to cut up the dash to do it. Uh, unlike pretty much everything else on this Defender, which is reversible to stock, that dash isn't because we've cut it all up now. Um, I would go back in time and put something, uh, a more factory looking uh, center console basically, or radio mount if I could. Otherwise, I think everything else uh, I'm happy with, I, I just uh, maybe do some of the preventative maintenance sooner, basically, before things broke. Anyway, that is it for this video. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below about what should happen next to this Defender and where I should go in terms of buying another Land Rover, potentially. Should I buy a series to kind of replace this on the road? Or should I go and buy something dedicated to going off-road? Or should I do both? Or should I do none of that and do something else that you've thought of? Let me know and I'll see you in the next video.